Hi guys, welcome back to Settle in Spain. I'm Amanda. I'm joined on this crazy journey by my husband, David, our dog Otis, and our cats Chewy and Impy. They're all around here somewhere and may feature at some point while I try and do this short introduction today. And I am keeping it short. I've got gloves on. It's freezing cold out here. Early Jan, no, late January now. Gosh, where's January gone? It's nearly February. We had snow last week. I'll put in a couple of pictures here of the snow that we got. It didn't last very long, but it was definitely here. We should have had more, but we've still got no liquid coming out of the sky. It is so dry, even on the mornings where we should have a thick frost. There's nothing on the car because there's zero humidity. It's quite scary. Um, the farmers are really, really worried about the crops for the coming year because we've just had no real rain since April. So fingers crossed in the next couple of months, we start to get some rain. We really need it. This week, it's the final week of the roof. At last, you're saying we've had enough of it. Okay, good. So this is going to be looking at that front porch what we decided to do, how it got done by the builders that we hired to work for us. These local guys were just amazing. They just did a fantastic job. I'm really pleased to say that since the first video, a couple of people have hired them as a result of showing this here on YouTube. So I'm really pleased for them because they really are great at what they do. I'm gonna go through the costings for you when we come to the end of the section with the building of the roof. I'll go through exactly what everything costs so you can see what we've paid. There's gonna be a bit of winter, how we're keeping warm here, and a bit of life in Southern Spain. I hope you enjoy this one. To those of you that are new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And if you've been following us for a while and haven't subscribed already, please do so. We're really close to meeting a magic number on YouTube. It's 1,000 subscribers. Once we do that, we can actually start to get some money from the ad revenue on YouTube, which would be fantastic to really help us push forward a lot quicker with these projects that we've got on the house and on the land on our next videos. Really? Was that necessary now? <laughs> right, where was I? Not sure where I was then, in the middle of that. What is it with dogs? They love an empty plastic bottle. Unfortunately, it doesn't go too well with video recording. <laughs> so, next time, you're going to see what's been going on in the house. I've been working really hard and using power tools again. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do remember to do so. Uh, we are really close to a magic number that means that we will start receiving ad revenue from these videos on YouTube. It means that I can spend more time working on the house and less time working online. <laughs> I'm getting covered in white fur, aren't I? Hey? I am. Has anyone else got a double-coated dog? This guy, at the moment, is a bit like a polar bear. But he's a polar bear who is constantly molting. There's handfuls coming out of him. That's the fun of trying to record when you've got this big guy in the garden with you. I hope you enjoy this one. See you next time. The Wednesday morning was bright and sunny. I took Otis for a walk around the block while the guys got ready setting up for the day. What I didn't expect while I was going for my walk was that by the time I got back they'd have taken apart the front of that porch. 
it just took me by surprise when I came back and actually I was quite emotional. The front of the house had changed completely and was always going to look different from now on. But it's our house and without doing that it would have collapsed. So onwards and upwards. We haven't fully decided yet what we're going to do about the front of that porch, whether we're going to put back a beam going across or do something different. What would you do? Next, moving on, El Sami and his son got out the acro props to hold up that roof so that the old beams could be removed one at a time. I can tell you now that of the five beams at the front of there, they were all completely hollow in the middle. So, concrete ones were going to go in their place, and here they are arriving. Although we're keen to use natural materials and traditional build, sometimes we've just got to be practical and the only practical way forward for the front of this porch was to put in concrete vigas. Beautiful clear blue skies on this morning and while that was going on the other two guys are up on the roof there and they're cleaning everything down they had a hose pipe and were cleaning down all the debris that was between the tiles it was amazing how much came off the roof Removing the old beam also required moving a part of the top of the wall there. These beams go in quite a way in order to have that strength that they need to hold up those really heavy traditional tiles. Then to get the beam out, it was the same as they'd done inside the house. Time for the chainsaw. So with the wooden beam taken out, it was now time to prepare the area that was going to hold the concrete beam in place. This had to be done for each beam, so they would remove the beam, prepare the area, put the concrete beam in, then shore up that concrete beam, filling in underneath and around it before moving the acro props along and then getting the next wooden beam out and putting the next concrete beam in. Quite a heavy and long process and it did take three to four of them to get one beam in place. This is not a job we could have done on our own. For those of you that didn't catch the last video, there were other options here. We could have had wooden beams put back in, but they would have been still subject to the same problems with insect damage being outside as the original ones. We could have had the porch removed completely and not had one. Or we could have had the old porch taken down and a brand new version rebuilt. For us, this was the best option for the moment. What would you have done? As they moved further down and removed more damaged beams, there was one thing we started to notice. Behind the end of each beam along that higher wall there, was a pigeon's nest. So this was yet another thing that the guys needed to sort out for us, which they did thankfully. They'd certainly worked very hard all morning to get all of those beams in place and the old ones taken out and pretty soon it was time to take a break for lunch. For lunch it was time to get those two new beams put in at the front there. Uh, the holes needed to be made bigger because the beams that we'd salvaged from the back of the property were actually wider and bigger. I came back from walking Otis to discover them doing this and he decided he wasn't too happy about a hole being cut in his wall. Your 
He soon calmed down and got into one of his favourite chairs, then joined me in another room where I was working online for the afternoon. Okay, so it is Wednesday afternoon after lunch. Uh, the day started off a little cloudy, then cleared, and now it's come in really grey. We've got storm clouds looking as if they're coming in over the mountains. The guys are now working flat out to get this front porch roof done because we've got a big storm forecast for Friday. So they've got today and tomorrow to get this done before this big storm comes in. Apparently it could be pretty nasty, there could be an awful lot of rain, but let's wait and see. The guys then worked flat out all afternoon. They wanted to get these beams in place so that they could then do the tiling the following day. They needed to adjust them, cut them and fit them into position and they did get that all done in one afternoon. Working as a team, two of them outside and two of them underneath the porch there. This time, again, getting rid of those spaces where the pigeons have been making their homes. This weather is horrible. <laughs> You're on camera. Can I say that again? A little jaunty angle here for the final day of the roof build at last. I took Otis for his walk while the guy started with relaying the tiles on top of where the new beams had been placed on that bottom edge there. And what a beautiful day it was. So here you can see they're getting those tiles done. There's still a bit of tidying up being done underneath the porch area there as well. As soon as they finished laying those front tiles, they then got up on that roof to relay all of them. They all needed to make sure that they were perfectly waterproof and ready for the weather. That was still forecast despite those beautiful blue skies. The storm apparently at this stage was still coming. So on the final day, they completely relayed all of the tiles on that roof. And then there was lots of clearing up to do. The roofs needed washing down, the outside area needed clearing up, the flat roof at the back needed clearing. There was some tidying up bits to do at the front. They had to put the scaffolding back up quickly to do that. But soon everything was completed in time for the end of the day. And we all went for a beer at the local bar around the corner. Right, so I've come back inside to go through with you the numbers because outside it was just getting too cold, that sun was setting and the temperature was dropping a bit too quickly. I've got the fire going in here so it's a lot warmer. Made myself a cup of tea because I forgot I had the washing machine going. So I couldn't record for you straight away, I had to wait a while. So I've got myself a cup of hot herbal tea and I'm gonna go through the numbers with you and a little bit of the details of how we went about doing this. So the roof, the first thing we did was get lots of recommendations from people locally. And then we got more than one quote in, or at least we tried to. I think we ended up with two in the end. The biggest problem that we came across was that after two years of COVID with everything being closed, a lot of people came back to their country homes from the cities, or they came back to their holiday homes from other countries. 
and found they needed work doing. After two years of being away, um, properties need looking after. They all came with a lot of money and were able to pay the builders quite well. And so we couldn't secure builders for quite a while. It was quite a difficult thing to do. If you remember, those of you who've been following us for a while, we bought the house back in February 2022. And one of the first things we had to do once we got all the paperwork sorted, it was in our names, was to make sure that we had planning permission for everything. We contacted a builder for a quote back in early May. Our planning permission didn't come through until June. So June 2022, we got our planning permission to get everything done in the house. We've, we've um, made sure we're doing everything by the book. On another video, I'll go through with you what the planning permission was, what the process was and how we did that. So we contacted builders early May. We got quotes in. We decided, yes, we were going to go with El Sami. He couldn't do it for several months. The earliest we were talking about was probably uh, October, maybe September, if other jobs didn't happen. As it turned out, it was early November by the time he came to do the work on our roof. So initially, the quote to remove all the tiles and relay them was what we asked for. And that quote came through at 2,250 euros. Now, at that time, he hadn't included the front porch as a part of that relaying process, and he hadn't realized the extra bit of roof we had at the back. Um, we got some extra things done. So the roof in total, including the porch, including the bit above where the bread oven was, it's roughly 200 square meters of roof. Hey, why do you want to go out now? Do you? Okay, hang on. I've got to go let the dog out the door. Where was I? 200 square meters of roof. Okay, so we've got 200 square meters of roof. That includes over the porch and above the bread oven. It doesn't include the bit that we had taken off. So 2250 was just to replace the main roof tiles. Then, of course, we needed to have the tiles taken off the back roof. We had initially thought we might do that ourselves and have them ready for the builders. Combination of reasons, we didn't do it ourselves. Hello, MP. Excuse me. Mummy's talking. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days, isn't it? Right. Where was I? Right. So, yes. Taking the tiles off the back roof to reuse on the roof... I had kind of thought in my head we could do it ourselves. We're not that fit to be clambering around on those roofs. That one had some damage to it and it wasn't 100% safe. So we made the decision to pay extra for the builders to have them do that. So they took all the tiles off and then removed the roof for us as well to reuse, if you remember, some of the beams from that roof. So we've reclaimed beams out of the roof they took the tiles off for us they then fitted the beams that needed replacing uh, we were not a hundred percent sure if that would need doing until they came and started working on the roof once they were up there and they were wandering around they could see where the issues were and we could see which beams needed replacing particularly at the very top there who's going to go up on that very top roof excuse me impy that's my tea thank you it's my tea yes not yours Oh, no, it's mine. Um, where was I? Yes, beams. Then you'll remember there was the beams at the front edge. Front edge? As you step outside the house on the right-hand side, the front edge of the porch, we always knew there was at least one dodgy beam there. So replacing that beam again with beams from out the back. Then the front of the porch, the very front edge, all needed to be replaced. We had five beams there that needed to come off. They were no longer safe. So they had to be taken down and they were replaced with concrete. So we're looking at the price of taking all of the tiles off and relaying them over the whole roof, including the porch and the back bit above the bread oven. Taking down that back roof to reclaim the beams, removing all the tiles so that they could be reused, replacing the beams inside the house and the beams on the porch 
and rebuilding that front section of the porch with concrete beams. There was all of the materials and the man hours. We had 200 square meters of roof, 192 man hours in total ish. They were there from 8 a.m. until sunset every day. They take a break from lunch, two till four, which is normal here in Spain. Um, and they would have a mid morning break sat at the house itself. It was never for very long. We had, let me think now, I've got it written down, I have my piece of paper. So there was one day where we had two men working on the roof and then two days where there were three men working on the roof and then we had four days with four guys. That's a lot of man hours. I worked it out to be, as I said, just over 190 man hours. Just to reiterate there, the original quote of 2,250 was just to remove and relay the tiles on the main roof. We then added relaying the tiles on the porch and the roof at the back above the bread oven, taking the roof down on that other section, reclaiming all the tiles, reclaiming the beams, replacing beams inside the house, replacing beams, wooden beams on the porch, uh, putting in concrete beams at that front section of the porch and all of the materials and man hours and that came in total to 3,550 euros. I think that was a bargain. I think we did really well. I think Sammy did an amazing job and so did his guys. Would we hire them again? Yes, we definitely would and probably will at some point. I hope this has been helpful for those of you who are thinking, MP, what are you doing? The animals are really trying to wind me up tonight. Impy's just found an elastic band over on the coffee table. And he loves an elastic band. Hair bands, I used to have, I could never find them anymore. The cats played with them and hidden them somewhere. <laughs> you wouldn't think he was a 13 year old cat. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't think it's a good idea to leave you with an elastic band. I don't think you can be trusted. No, I don't think you can be trusted, little man. Can I have that? <laughs> can I have that? Am I not allowed to have that? No, am I not allowed to have that? going to go wrong. One of us is going to get hurt. Which one is it? <laughs> oh, Impy, you're too funny. <laughs> What's my hand? <laughs> Ow! What's my finger? So where was I? Yes, would we hire Sammy again? Yes, we definitely would. And I think if, not if, but when we have a job that requires getting a professional in, we'll be giving him a call. Next up, I'm gonna show you what we did with some of the stuff that came out of that roof that we took down at the back. Before we knew it, December was here and we got to work on those rotten beams, turning them into firewood. Here's the evidence of our insect damage. I think what we're going to have a go at doing is um, hollowing that out, making it into a very small canoe or a very large bong. I mean pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm not going to do a full 100% drop start, if you know what that is. I ain't going to do it, but this is one way not to start a chainsaw. <laughs> Now 
Now, I've never used a chainsaw before, but I'm not afraid of power tools, so I decided it was time to learn. So in here is where your fuel goes. And so what you've got here is a, a petrol a petrol pump uh -huh. plus a drop. Okay. So that means petrol plus oil. Plus so oil. It's a two-stroke mix. Okay. So the oil is mixed with the fuel. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I've got in my little red my little red canister. Okay. That's all mixed. Pre -mixed. That's pre-mixed. Yeah. And here is the oil gauge. Yeah, but that's the oil for the for the chain. That's not the oil for the. That's engine. the chain oil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that. Yeah. That lasts a lot longer than the fuel does. Okay. Um, but the locals just use olive oil in there. It's just some lubrication. All oh, right. Okay. Just stop some lubrication. Going, right? Yeah. So when you take the scabbard off, just have a quick check. You've got some play on there. That's probably a little bit too much. Right in the middle. Halfway between there and the driving wheel. Okay. Just want a little Just get bit. a little bit of play. That's probably a tiny little bit too much. Okay. It's adjusted here. Yeah. That machine. But don't worry about that. Okay. Handy little screwdriver on that end. Ah, it's cool. And here's a two-stroke mix, which, as I say, is fuel with oil. Fuel with oil. I've got to crack that open as well. Okay. So, as the fuel goes out, but the air goes in. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Because it's plastic. Yeah, exactly. Lid on the this fuel tank. Yeah. So there's a clutch. This is the clutch. Okay. Um, it's just, it's a safety thing. Yeah. So just push it away from you. It doesn't okay. really matter if it's sitting there. But yeah. It's a safety thing. So okay. Take that away from you, and then you've got to start it. Okay. Pull start it. Yeah. Um, unless you choke. Okay. I've had it running today. Yes. You've actually got, see that flat bit there? Yeah. That's to put your foot in. Oh, cool. But I've got safety boots on, so I can't use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your feet don't fit in. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and you take the guard off, I guess, to start it as well. That. Yeah. Well, it doesn't really matter because I've got, I've pressed the clutch away. So it doesn't matter what you do here. Okay. That's not going to spin around until you pull that in. Ah, okay. Okay. Now, so you've got to switch this um, the switch here to on. Yeah. Or half choke, yeah, or full choke, okay. But you've also got to have these. This is a safety catch. There's your trigger. Yeah, yeah. That won't work until you press the safety catch. Ah, right. And then you pull the trigger. Uh -huh. Now I've had this running today, so it might start. It might be. Never, never start a chainsaw like this. Okay. It's always going to want to try and pull, push the log towards you, towards you. That's why you push the log away. That's right, yeah. That makes sense. Well, and you can see this is the end that was in know, the that's wall. Why, that's why I put everything facing this way, actually, so you yeah. can see. If you, take, if you take a video of all this, we can talk about it later. But it's just completely rotten on the ends. Yeah, that's like, that's, that is just like paper. Yeah. These were the ends that were coming out here when they took the roof off. That's how they, they saw it. Yeah, yeah. And they were only taking it off because this one was rotten. 
Yes. <laughs> it wouldn't have This then is a lesson in how you would keep you warm more than once. Chopping it, stacking it in the trailer, taking the trailer across to the rental, then taking it out of the trailer and stacking it again at the back of the rental house and then taking it from there and putting it on the fire. It's worked though, it has kept us warm. A little bit more of the snow in the hamlet the other morning as I was heading across to the house to do some work. As I say in the next video find out what I've been doing with power tools inside the house and here we have the signs of spring on our land. A couple of our almond trees are in flower and there are these beautiful narcissi just outside the front of the house. Thank you for joining us today I hope you enjoyed this one. See you next time.